And again, welcome to the Bible Christmas of God, Brother Jacob. And happy Sabbath to the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, spiritually speaking and physically. And today, as we open up this month, the first Sabbath of the month of March, we are doing what is called Understanding the Feast of the Lord series. Uh, this whole month, I'm dedicating to break it down the feast. Uh, to, that includes our Wednesday night program. We will be going in depth, uh, you know, clearing up some of the controversies. We're going to get into uh, Abel today. We're going to deal with the Passover a little bit. We're going to deal with the Passover controversy on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to deal with how the feast applied to our salvation on a daily basis. We're going to even get to the dates, y'all. We're going to deal with how you get the dates. And then we're going to deal with the end time aspects of how the Lord's feast uh, apply, okay? So with that being said, our lesson today is Abel, the feast, the, uh, the month that sets the Lord's feast. Again, it's called Abel, the month that sets the Lord's feast. And the word Abel, if you, uh, for those that keep the feast of the Lord, according to the law, we will find that the word Abib is the only word that you find by name as it pertains to a new moon in the law. So those of us that believe in keeping the feast according to how the law uh, established it in the church, this is what we're going to deal with and this is what I want to point out because, you know, we jump all over the Christians about how they're keeping pagan holidays and Christmas and Easter Sunday, how all that is pagan. Nevertheless, somebody asked you, how do you know when Abib is here? What determines Abib? Can you answer that? Because if we can put the finger on them, don't let them put the finger on you. And if you can break it down, if you can go in on that stuff, you need to understand for yourself if somebody asks you, how is Abib determined? Now, there's various schools of thoughts out here. Some say, well, it's by the barley. You know, and you got a lot of brothers that's on that. And I'm here to submit, and we're going to get an understanding that it's not only by the seasons, but it's also by the equinox and it's by the new moon. Now, this year, 2019, in particular, we have an extra month, an extra lunar month has been added. And we're going to understand why that was brought about. But I want to get back to the word Abib. Because Abib is really big, huge, y'all. When you understand even God's creation, that's why I have on my uh, right, your left, the word, the uh, chart of the creation. And in the creation, I just want to point out, since God said in the beginning, let there be light, all the way up until now, we have yet to leave out of the beginning. We as the creation, we're not even out of the month of Abel in the sight of God. I want you to understand that. So when we say Abel, the lesson I bring you today is for the aspect, because look, I just want to point out, because on the sixth day that God created heaven, uh, making the heaven earth, is when God created man, and then he told man to work for six days, which gives us, because uh, which gets from day one, brings us to the 11th day of creation, and then God is going to rest on the 12th day of creation, which is the seventh day for man. That's why he commanded man to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and all that is to him, but on the seventh day he rested. So for us, the seventh day is the 12th day in the creation from the beginning. From the beginning, y'all. So we haven't even left the first month of the creation. The first month, y'all. So let's know that, man, and we're going to get into that as, the, as we go along in this uh, seminar or this series all month long in March. Nevertheless, we're going to deal with AB a for our sake in our, uh, 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 in our time being that we are flesh and blood. So how is AB determined, y'all? Well, we're going to put it on the table that it is determined by three things. And I have this on our website, BibleChristiansToGod.com. 
it is determined by three things being in sync. By seasons, by equinox, and by the new moon. And then we're going to get into the 30-day count. So we know how we are to count the rest of the months. So now let's go in our first place. Let's go to Exodus, the 13th chapter, and verse 4, where the Lord mentions A, B. Exodus 13 and verse 4. Because this is the only new moon by name. All the other names that you see on the lunar calendar come out of the Babylonian captivity. They come out of those Babylonian names. Okay? And Abel is the only one found in the law. So those of us that are adamant about keeping the Lord's feast, uh, we ain't got nothing to do with the Babylonian names that they add on it. To the Lord's, to the lunar calendar, y'all. I put it like that. Because right here in Exodus 13 and verse, uh, Exodus 13 chapter and verse, we're going to start at verse uh, 3. Exodus 13 chapter and we're going to go start at verse 3. I'm sorry, we're going to start at verse 3. Read. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Uh huh. This day, this day came ye out in the month Abel. Now, he said, This day you came out in the month Abel. We came out on the 15th day. Because everybody knows the Lord put the blood up on the 14th day. For everyone that believe it, you see, put the blood up on the doorpost, and that's how Israel got delivered. And those that rather got that put the blood up were delivered. Nevertheless, this is the uh, month, the word where you find one of the times that the word A.B. was mentioned. Now let's go to uh, the 13, 23rd chapter, verse 15. Exodus 23 and 15. You know, people used to ask me, uh, 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 how Abib determined? I have never been taught how Abib had been determined. Nobody had brought it forth. How Abib is determined. So I went in and looked and sought it out. And the Lord showed me in his word, you just can't go by barley. Because in the beginning, when the Lord even set up the creation that we live in, there was no vegetation on day one, y'all. Okay? So what determines the beginning? Okay? It is very critical to understand how Abib is determined, y'all. That's why it's three things. By season, by the equinox, and by the new moon. So there was no new moon in the beginning on the first day of the creation. No equinox, no season. But we're going to see how all these things line up and give us the Abib for us, being flesh and blood. There's an Abib for the creation. Let me make that clear. There's an Abib concerning the creation. And then there's an A bid for us. So let me deal with the one that's for us by going here, Exodus 23 and verse 15, because the Lord, 14 rather, because the Lord links A bid with his feasts. You don't see the Lord linking no other new moon by name to his feast. Only A bid is linked to the Lord's feast. That's why the Lord's feasts are called set feasts. Set from what? Look at what the Lord got right here. Read. Three times I shall keep a feast unto me in the year. Now no, she said three times shalt thou keep a feast unto me in the year. Let's see what the Lord identifies as a feast. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. See, the unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread is a feast. The Passover is not a feast, y'all. It's the bread and the wine. Now that we're under the new covenant, y'all, nevertheless, the feast now watch how long the feast is, y'all. Go ahead. Thou should eat unleavened bread seven days. Come on, y'all. The Passover is only one day, y'all. The Passover is only one day. That's what's the difference between the unleavened bread and the Passover. Passover is one day, feast of unleavened bread seven days. Go ahead. I like a minute, in the time appointed of the month A.B. See, in the time appointed of the month A.B. And this is the first month, and it sets up the rest of the feast for the rest of the year. Go ahead. For in it thou came out, out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me in it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. In the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labor, 
which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of in gathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labor out of the field. Uh -huh. Three times in a year, all thy men shall appear before the Lord God. See, all these feasts are set from Abib, so we don't observe no other new moon, y'all. We don't get off of Titish. We don't get off of Ethanim or another new moon. Abib is the only one he named in the law, and it sets up our what? Unleavened bread. It sets up our Pentecost. It sets up our Feast of Ingathering, which consists of the tabernacles and the eighth day. All is set from the beginning. Okay? Let's go to 34 and 18. Exodus 34, chapter, verse 18. You didn't see the Lord throw no other new moons in there, y'all. 34, 18. Abib sets the feast of the Lord. So we're going to Exodus 34 and verse 18. That's it. We never left from that uh, 2315. Read. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep seven days. <clears throat> seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread as mm -hmm. I commanded thee in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. See, seven days. That's how long the feast of unleavened bread is. The Passover is one day, y'all. That's the big difference. Now let's get down, I'll skip down to verse 22. Read. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks, and the feast of weeks of the first fruit of wheat harvest, mm -hmm. and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Uh huh. Twice in the year shall all your men, children, appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. Now look, notice how he, when he mentions Abel, we keep reading down, we see the feast of uh, weeks of the first fruits of the harvest. And then notice how the Lord says the feast of Engab, which is in the year's end, because the Lord's year is split. You got six months for the beginning, and you got six months for the end, y'all. This divided by 180 days. We're going to get a tell as we go along in this series, y'all, and break this thing down. So now let's go to Deuteronomy 16, chapter, and verse 1. And look at the commandment to observe A.B. And if we would just follow what the book say, we would clearly see how important A.B. is to us. No other month is as significant as this month A.B. Now in particular, I'm going to get into for this, for this year because we got an additional month. Show you why and how the 13th month came up. Okay, y'all? The 13th month, we'll, we'll find out how all that is as we break down how a bib is determined. So Deuteronomy 16 and 1. Read. Observe. Observe the month of a bib. No, it's the commandment here. Observe the month of a bib. Go ahead. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of a bib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So this is very important, y'all, because he said by this is when we came out of Egypt. And then we see here again, keep the Passover. Now the Passover is one day. That's the 14th day, y'all. And we're going to see that clearly. We're going to see that. Let's get down to verse 16. Skip down to verse 16. Because in between, I'm, before we read that, I just want everyone to just take a quick skim over, if you look at verse 2, for, for another new moon, okay? Now, verse 2, verse 3, talks about unleavened bread. Verse 4, 5, 6, talks about the Passover again, 7, 8, then verse 9, number about the 50 days of Pentecost, all these things. I just want you to scan over, just take a quick sight, look, and then if you look at all the way down to verse 13, it talks about observing the Feast of Tabernacles. And then uh, verse uh, 14 tells you shall rejoice in the feast. 15, the seven days shall I keep a solemn feast to the Lord. But one thing we notice, did anybody find another name of another new moon? No, 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 no. And this is what the Lord found in his feast of. Because at the top of this chapter, he said his feast from what? A B. So let's read verse 16. Read. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God, 
and the place which he shall choose. Uh -huh. And the feast of the unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, uh -huh. and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord in thee. Again, we're seeing one new moon mentioned, the Abib month. And then the Lord goes into his feast. Now, those of us that really study the law concerning the feast, this is plain. In the first five books, except for Moses' obituary, this is the only new moon he knew by name, or the month he knew by name, a bit, because the others came by Babylonian captivity. So now let's go to Leviticus 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23rd chapter. And then when you observe a bit, a bit was always 30 days. So he said it's feast by a 30 day count from henceforth on out, child. And then when you come all the way around this time of year, we prepare to do what we read at the top of Deuteronomy 16 to observe a B. And we're going to look at how you go about observing it. Because there's a reason why there's an additional ADAR here. Yeah, I understand the lunar calendar names. It's called ADAR, ADAR 2. They add it, and there's a reason why. And we're going to look at the biblical aspect of why you got to add that. But nevertheless, let's go to the Leviticus 23rd chapter. And, uh, Verse 1. But the A-B of the creation, y'all. But this A-B that we're looking at now, this is for us. Being flesh and blood. Because when we get to A-B for the creation, ain't going to be no flesh and blood like you see now. That's why it's going to be, that's why that's different. That's why that Passover is different from the one we're dealing with now. So, Leviticus 23 and let's speak, uh, 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 let's read verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even, even, these are my feasts. Now look, this chapter contains the Lord's feast that pertain to salvation. Now as we go on in this uh, series for this month, we're going to get into all the little side show bobs to y'all on the Wednesdays, okay? We're going to deal with Purim. We're going to deal with Hanukkah and all of that feast of dedication, okay? So those little, those are silver holidays. Those are things that were specifically belong to the Jews. But these feasts that we read in Leviticus 23, they belong to the Lord. That's the difference. These are the Lords. Hanukkah and uh, uh, Purim, those were the Jews, okay? So now, let's get down to the uh, uh, camp here. And uh, skip down to verse 4. And watch as I said, the Lord repeated himself, but he went to the weekly Sabbath, which we're not dealing with today. We're dealing with the Lord's feast that are annual. Let me state that. We're dealing with the annual feast. I got a whole other lesson about what the Sabbath day is about. Okay? Nevertheless, we're dealing with Abib because Abib sets the feast of the Lord. Verse 4, read. Verse 4? Yeah. These are, these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, notice he said holy convocations, meaning holy gatherings, okay? And he said in their seasons, because the Lord's feast is split between two seasons, y'all. You had a two seasons, you had a summer season, and you had a winter season. That's why it's so important to understand, and we're going to get into observing how the equinox plays in factoring in, and the moon, and the seasons to which the Lord's feasts are set to be observed in. Now watch this, y'all. Remember, we read the Passover to be observed in the month A.B. So read verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month, at evening, is the Lord's Passover. So now we have identified that A.B. is the first month, and that the Passover is to be observed on the what? The 14th day of the month Abib, a.k.a. the first month, at even. At even. You can't do this feast. You can't do this Passover. You can't do this observance in the daytime. This is the only thing out of all the Lord's feast that must be done at even. Can't be done in the daytime. But the feast of our living bread, you can do that in the daytime. We can adjust it to the daytime. We can adjust it to the night. But what makes the Passover so much different for us being flesh and blood is the Lord requires it to be done in the evening. That's why it's different from the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It 
And everybody can't partake of the Passover, but everybody showed, but it showed for the next verse we read right here. Go ahead, verse 16, verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Now wait, then the Lord said, all your males must appear three times in a year. What was the first one he said? The feast of what? Unleavened bread. Everybody better should show up for this one, whether you uncircumcised or not. In this commandment, we read what, three times? So the feast of unleavened bread, the first day, everybody got to show up for that. But the Passover, mm -mm, if there's requirements, stipulations, that must be met. Physically. So we see in the first month, which is a bid, we see the feast of unleavened bread, which is separate from the Passover. So now, let's go to Numbers 28th chapter. Because we never left Leviticus 23rd chapter. Let's go to Numbers 28. And we're going to skip all the lunar stuff. Because everything from verse 11 all the way down to verse 15, that's lunar. Prior to that, the Lord had a Sabbath day he talked about, and he talked about the daily burnt offerings. But watch when we get to the feast at verse 16, Numbers 28 and verse 16. Read. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. Now again, Numbers 28, Verse 16 says, on the 14th day of the first month, which we read at the top of Deuteronomy 16 chapter, is the month called what? Abib, which is the time that we keep the Passover. Go ahead. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. Now, then we go right to the 15th day, and we see the require we understand the requirements of why the Lord said three times in a year shall all your males appear, which is on the 15th day of the first month of the day of this month. is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. Now, let's go to, uh, uh, skip down to the 29th chapter and start at verse 1. Read. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You should do no sort of our work. It is a day of going the trumpets unto you. Wait a minute now. Come in there and say, uh, Tish. Or Ethan. No other new moon, Abib, is where <coughs> this day was set from, y'all. From Abib. And why are you saying set, y'all? Let's do ourselves a favor. Now let's go to 2 Chronicles 31 and uh, 3. Second Chronicles 31 and 3. And this is for Israel got took out and went into the Babylonian captivity, y'all. Second Chronicles 31. And verse 3. Read. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offering to wait for the morning and evening. Now stop right there. If we had started at the top of Numbers 28th chapter, it talks about the daily sacrifice. The morning and the evening. Go ahead. The morning, for the morning and evening burnt offerings. And the burnt offerings for the Sabbath. Oh, so there were burnt offerings for the Sabbath, huh? Okay, go ahead. And for the new moon. Oh, then this, what's next? It talks about the new moon. See, the Lord has here clearly a category. We see daily, then we see for the week, and then we see for the new moon. So, okay? Each one of these is separate. Because the new moons fluctuate, they float around. Okay? Some days are 30, some are 29, some are 30, 20. It, it fluctuates back and forth. Next. And for the set feast. Oh, wait a minute. And for the what? We did here. And for the <coughs> And for the set feast. And for the set feast. What, why is he saying set? That means they don't change. And that means there's a point from which it is set from. Like I always use the, use the analogy, you know, you set an alarm clock. You don't set the alarm clock while you're sleeping. 
You said it before you go to bed. You said, oh man, I got to wake up at 5.30. Oh, let me set my alarm clock. Keyword, you fix a point. You set me. Meaning the Lord's feasts are set. And that's why he said, for the set feast, go ahead. As it, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Which we were reading in the law. And in the law, he only had a bit that set from a bit, y'all. So it's real important that we get down in us what determines a bill? So let's get into that. Now, how do we get a bill? Is it by the seasons only? You got you got school thoughts that say only by the seasons. You have school that thought that say, well, brothers, only by the new moon. All right? And you got some other brothers that say, well, based around the equinox, you know, I'm like, okay, bro. But we submit, and I'm going to show that it takes all three elements. Working in harmony to establish a bid. So let's go first by uh, season. Let's go to Psalm 74 and 17. Because there's two seasons that the Lord set up. There's two seasons according to the Bible. Then you have transitions. But two seasons. Psalm 74 and verse 17. Now I got some... Uh, some uh, uh, data that we're going to get into because the Lord even has written that nature does teach us things. Which means nature has lessons for us, y'all. Okay? And we shall look at those things. Psalm 74 and verse 17. Go ahead. Thou hast, thou hast set all the borders of the earth. See, the Lord worked with things that are set. Y'all, He set certain things in place, and there ain't nothing we can do about it. You either gonna be with it or you against it. Amen. The Lord even got set thrones in the house of judgment. That's right. He even Joel, even a man of God, said, "Look, Lord, remember a set the set time. Remember the time appointed." That set and remember me. That's a time that the Lord gonna raise the dead. That's a set time. So he has set all the borders of the earth. That's why the sun don't rise in the west and set in the east, y'all. I thought you never see it rise in the north and set in the south. The Lord set the borders of the earth. North, east, west, and south. He set the borders, y'all. But go ahead. Thou has made summer and winter. See, the Lord has made what? Summer and winter. Those are two seasons. That's how we know we can't have the end of the year feast in the first season. Because the Lord wanted in seasons. There are two seasons, summer and winter. So now let's go to Genesis. Genesis 8 and 22. And then we're going to get into something Jesus said when we know that summer is coming. Genesis 8 and 22. And it takes all three of these, and I'll show you, I'm going to show you how they all link up. Genesis 8 and 22, y'all. Because you have transitions between spring, you got spring was transitions from winter to into the uh, uh, brings in fully blown summer, and the summer transitions out with the fall, going into the winter. Because watch what he said, go ahead. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, mm -hmm. and cold and heat, uh -huh. and summer and winter, uh -huh. and day and night should not cease. Notice why the Lord break this boundaries down, y'all. While the earth remains, it's seed time and harvest. Notice this is cold and heat. Summer and what? Winter. Day and night shall not cease. Now let's go to what Jesus said right here. Let's go to Luke 21 and 29. Now the Lord says something very, very interesting in understanding how these seasons come about. Luke 21 and 29. He was using it and concerning the end time. But watch this, y'all. Luke 21 and verse 29. Read. 
and he spake to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. Uh huh. When they <clears throat> when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Now notice what it says. Behold, the fig tree and all trees. And this relates to the seasons. And we're going to come on and pull up this article here. It says, when they now shoot forth, ye what? See and know of your own selves that summer is now not at hand. So he likened this to the kingdom of God. They're like we watch the signs concerning end time prophecies where we see watching the signs around us as we transition into the fall and into the winter. I mean, a, a summer we go and transition into the winter and we transition into the summer. That's such as what's going on now. Now, the book just said that, but watch what happens here. I want to go to 1 Corinthians uh, 11 and 14 before I read this article. Because the trees around us teach us and show us What's going on around us? That's why they had the leaves fall off in the, going into the winter, and then they start blooming, and we know, we look around, and, oh man, the pretty flowers start to come up. Oh, here comes summer. The Lord show you in nature what's going on all around us, y'all. That's why we know January 1 ain't the beginning of the year, because there ain't no trees blooming, ain't no flowers coming forth, y'all. Okay? That's how we know. January 1 ain't the beginning of the year. It's the beginning of the, gent the Gentile, the uh, year according to the Gentiles, but not according to the Creator. Okay? So, right here, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 14, because Paul was bringing a, 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 a point here about hair. Nevertheless, I want to bring out something in this passage. Go ahead. 11 and 14? Yeah. Do it not even nature itself teach you? That if a man had long hair, it is a shame unto him. Now, do you think that's the only lesson that nature teaches us, y'all? Right now, it's showing us that we get ready to head into the what? The sun, according to what Jesus said. We start seeing the leaves bring forth. He said, you now know. Which means nature is teaching us. What God has put in place is showing us, here comes the summertime. And I want to read this out of how trees uh know when to wake up. The source of this is the northernwoodlands.org article on uh, nature. We take trees for granted that trees drop their leaves in the fall and open their buds in the spring, like Jesus said. This is how we know. Nature is teaching us, okay? We know when winter time is getting ready to come and we know when summertime is getting ready to come. So now, uh, let me go here. Trees survive sub-freezing winters by becoming dormant, a gradual process that begins long before winter. As summer gives way to autumn, cooling temperatures and lifting nights tell trees to stop elongating their, tr their twigs and make resting buds instead. So nature is teaching us. So as we see these things occurring, we, we can tell our environment is shifting. Our environment is changing. From one season to the other season, from uh, winter into the summer. That's why he said, you know how that summer is drawn not by the seasons and by the trees. That's one element. So we see here by the trees and by the seasons and temperatures. Because the days that they get longer and they get colder, but we're going to get into that because that's another element that's coming up in here. Let me bring this uh, point out here. However, in temperature, temperate zones, the onset of fall brings shortening days as well as cold, and together these signals send trees into the next phase of dormancy called true dormancy, which begins a few weeks after the growth sensation. Trees sense by length, actually the night length, oh sorry, trees sense day length, meaning the length of days, uh, they actually sense this. I'm going to read this again. Trees sense day length, actually the night length, because they're looking for that warmth. But if the nights get longer, they can tell, oh man, it's getting, the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. Through what's called photochrome, a blue pigment that exists in the two convertible forms. Uh, let me skip to, I don't want to confuse nobody. 
But native uh, protocol converts to activate photocon when hit by a, a proton of red light. Now in the dark, they activate, the activated protocol converts to native form and the amount of time in the dark required for all the activated protocol to return to its native state is how plants measure the length of the night. So within the plants, that's why Jesus said you can tell by when the trees are blooming. Because they're being affected by the length of days and the length of night and the temperatures. Let's go to Jeremiah 36 and 30 now. Jeremiah 36 and 30. Because the amount of daylight and the amount of night affects the temperature that these trees are sensing. That's why the Lord said, notice the fig tree in all trees, they begin to bloom because they're being affected by temperature, y'all. Watch this. Because in this case, in Jeremiah 36, uh, the Lord wanted this man to be affected and this, this dead body to be affected. Watch what he said it's going to be affected by. Just about 36 and 30. Read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of Je Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, uh -huh. and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat. Oh, in the day to the heat. So in the daytime, you get heat. Go ahead. And in the night to the frost. And in the night to the frost. So as the day lifts and these trees are sensing this heat. Or as the night lifts and they sensing the cold. Remember we read day and night, hot and cold, summer and winter. These are what affects the seasons and the trees sense this. That's why we use A.B. from Deuteronomy 13, uh, 16 and 1. We use the set feats and we have to use Believe it or not, how the land is affected in Jerusalem. How I know that? Let's go to uh, Leviticus 26 and 34. Leviticus 26 and 34. Leviticus 26 and 34. Because the Lord told our forefathers, look, I'm going to scatter you among the heathen. But watch what he said about the land. Go ahead. Then I will give you rain in due season. Uh -huh. And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. You on, you on 26 and 34? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Verse 34. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath as long as it is locked. As long as it life, this is it. And ye be in your enemy's land. Uh -huh. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. So now he said, Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath. As long as it lie desolate, ye shall be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. Because the Lord's feasts are called Sabbaths, y'all. Feast days, the holy days. So now I'm going to point out something. The land of Jerusalem. Uh, let me see if I can bring up a bigger chart here. I have a piece here. I want to zoom in on this. This is the land. And as you can see, the temperature and scale, this, the green represents the precipitation. So it gets dry in the summertime. But then as it goes into the winter, it gets precipitation in the land picks up. So the temperature in the land varies from winter, goes into the summer mode right here, and then goes back into winter. So based on the season, it regulates, that's why we go and we utilize Jerusalem as setting our feast by, because from the land, the Lord sets his Sabbath, y'all. What's going on in the land? So now, that's one aspect, the season that are affecting the land. So now, Let's go to uh, uh, show you right here. Let's go to Esther 2 and 2. Esther 2 and 2. This is at the book of Nehemiah. Esther 2 and 2. Stop, 2 and 20. My bad. He said, the borders of the earth, y'all, and 
right here, that's Esther 2 and verse 12. Watch how 12 months are broken down, y'all. That's why we read in the end of the year, you got the, the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. Now when every maid's turn was to come to go into King Asuras, after that, she had been 12 months according to the manner of the woman. Mm -hmm. For so were the days of their per perfections accomplished to wit six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the woman. So a year is divided by six months, y'all. You got six months for the big star part and six months for the end. In this aspect, so is it with the Lord's how you count from the first month. So let's go to Exodus 12 chapter, y'all. Exodus 12 and 1. Exodus 12 and verse 1. When he set it right up for, for the church. Exodus 12 and 1. And then I'm going to get in, we're going we're gonna to get into, once I, uh, Bring on three elements. We're going to see why there's a 13th month this year. Exodus 12 and verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now look, the Lord showed to, told Moses, Look, this month shall be the beginning of months unto you. It is the first month of the year unto you. Now let's get down to verse uh, all the way down and let's go, I want to go all the way down to verse 12. This is why we got the passage. Verse 12. Yes, get down to verse 12. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 11, my bad. Read. And thus shall ye eat it with your loin skirt, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Uh -huh. And ye shall eat it in haste. It, it is the Lord's Passover. Now, this is the Lord's Passover that was done on the 14th day of the month. Now, we got to understand, this is when the Lord first set this Passover up, and it was why they were in bondage. They had to do this while they were still in captivity, while they were still in Israel, uh, in Egypt. It was when he gave his, Lord, his Passover to Israel to put blood over their doorposts. But remember, they came out in the month of Abel. So we see this clearly is the Lord's Passover, and this is clearly an event that starts, comes in, into effect in the beginning of the year. Now, what I want to do is go, uh, 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 and show you how the equinox affects with the Passover, how this thing shifts with the Passover. Now, let's go to uh, uh, St. John 11, chapter and verse 9. Because now I want to move over to the equinox. Because the equinox proceeds the Passover. By going to St. John 11 and 9. St. John 11 and 9. But you have, when the Passover was set up, the events and the actions that pre, uh, uh, brought about our coming out of Egypt. The Lord had them do certain things for the Passover, and then they had to leave the next day, y'all. But right here, Exodus, sorry, uh, 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 St. John, St. John 11 and 9. St. John 11 chapter and verse 9. Now watch what Jesus says here. Go ahead. Jesus answered, are, are there not 12 hours in, in the day? Now wait a minute. He said, are there not 12 hours in a day? Because the daytime at this time was actually preceding the Passover. Now if there's 12 hours in the day, then there's 12 hours in the night because a complete day consists of night and day. So at this time, you had an equal end coming about. How do I know this? Go ahead and finish that. You finish that. Go ahead. Go ahead. If any man walk in the day, he stumbled, he stumbled not because he seeth the light of this world. Now look, skip all the way down to 50, verse uh, 55 because 
The time period that Jesus said is preceded the Passover. And equal, uh, 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 equal nights occurs before the Passover. So you have to have the seasons in line and you have to have the Passover. Coming up. Go ahead. And the Jews' Passover was not mm -hmm. at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. So now you have the equinox. Now this year, the equinox occurs March 20th. Okay? It occurs March 20th, but the new moon shows up on the 6th, which is greater than seven days, or when the Lord set up in the beginning the creation custom. Six days he may have an earth, but the seven he arrested him. So we're going to understand when you have the new moon appear greater than six days from the equinox, then you have to go to the next new moon because of this very passage right here. Let's go to, uh, 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 I'm going to go to Genesis, I'm sorry, Exodus 20th chapter. Let's go with Exodus 20th chapter. Creation week. 
of seven days. That's why the next new moon is the one that we go by, not by this new moon that come up on March 6th. Okay? So now let's go to Ezekiel 18 chapter and understand why we have to use this principle, y'all. Ezekiel 18 and 29. Ezekiel 18 chapter and verse 29. Because these are the Lord's feasts, right? And if it's the Lord's feasts, then we understand why the Lord used the equal uh, uh, the equinox. Now the term, let me, let me kind of, some people may not be familiar. <laughs> equinox occur when the axis of the earth, uh, i.e. the line that forms north to south, is exactly parallel to the direction of the motion of the earth around the sun. Okay? Because the Lord sent out his signal across the whole planet. Twelve hours goes across the entire planet at one swoop, y'all, on the day of the equinox. On the day of the equinox. But go ahead and read that Ezekiel 18 and 29. Yes, said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hmm. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? See, the Lord's ways is equal. That's why he died after the day that there was 12 and 12, which you know points toward the 12 sons or the 12 tribes of Israel. Then the king died on the Passover, which represents you. That's why it's all linked together, y'all. All linked together. So now let's go to show you the boundaries. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Deuteronomy 32, 32nd chapter, verse 8. Now remember this year, we get an additional new moon, we got to count, which actually means we have 13 months. Okay? Watch this. Normal, 12 months. But whenever that new moon falls outside of the creation week or proceeds is greater than seven days, then we add a 13th month. How many kids did Jacob actually have, y'all? He had 12 sons. But everybody's forgetting that he had a what? A daughter, too. Which means he had a total number of how many kids? 13. Because I know you don't want this, this kind of daughter and say, that's not your child. Okay? Child, please. Anyway, let's do this. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 8. Read. When the Most High divided to the, the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of children of Israel. According to the number of the children of Israel. That's why you got 12 hours for day. You have 12 hours on your clock, and it goes around and says, what, 24 hours. Okay? I thought you have them flat out. The Gentiles can't even get around. That's why there's 12 months in the year. We're living in the times of the Gentiles. You only go from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. How many months is that? 12. But the Lord uses the moon to announce Dinah, which is his daughter too. How do I know that? Let's go to Jeremiah, sorry, uh, Genesis 46 and 8. That's why we have a 13th month this year. He's acknowledging Dinah this year. She's his child too. You may tell me a man with five daughters ain't got no children. Hello? Huh. Genesis 46 and verse 8. Let's look at all of Jacob's children right here. Genesis 46 and verse 8. And then we're going to look at how the moon plays into this thing. A little further. 46 and verse Verse 8. Read. And these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons. Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, mm -hmm. and the sons of Reuben, Hanak, Falu, Hezron, and Carmel, and the sons of Simeon, Jamel, Jamin, Ohad, 
and Jack, Jackie, mm -hmm. and Zohar, and, Sh and Shaw, the son of Canaanitish woman, of a Canaanitish woman. Canaanitish. Canaanitish woman. So now here we see his sons and his grandsons. Go ahead, verse 11. And the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Mar Marar, and the sons of Judah, Ur, uh -huh. er, and Onan, and Shelah, and Phares, and Zarah, but Ur er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Uh -huh. And the sons of Phares were Hezron and Hamor, and the sons of Issachar, Tola, and Fova, and, and Job, and Shiram, Shimron, and the sons of Zebulun, Sered, Zebulun, Zebulun mm -hmm. Sered, and Eli, and Jalil. These be the sons of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, and Padamaran, Padamaran, with his daughters, and Dinah. Oh, with his daughter, what? With Dinah. So we know about the twelve tribes, the twelve sons, but the Lord this year, you can say this is the year of Dinah. With the moon. Or with the with the new moon. He pointing out, hey, I'm acknowledging Dinah because she was a child of Israel too, right? Okay. And all the souls, go ahead and finish that. All the souls of his sons and his daughters were thirty and three. Now that's good, that's good, good. That's good. Now let's go to Psalms 104. Show you how the moon plays into this thing. Psalms 104 and verse 19. Psalm 104. And verse 19. Read. He appointed the moon for the seasons. For seasons. Uh -huh. The sun knoweth his going down. So now, go ahead, keep going. Thou will make his darkness, and it is, it is night. Where all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Now, see, he appointed the moon for seasons. So the Abraham moon was very, very important. And this moon that's coming up on March 6th, that moon is going to, that month that follows after that is acknowledged Dina, which is taking us to the Abel new moon, y'all, which comes up on a, let me make sure I got up my data right. Uh, so we got our data right. This comes up April 5th. Yep, the new moon appears April 5th, y'all. So, with that being said, let's look at the new moon situation, look, or how we, we uh, uh, Paul even acknowledged this, y'all. Let's go to Colossians 2 and 16. Colossians 2 and 16. Because the Abed new moon dictated when the holy days will come. Colossians 2 and 16. And then we will go and see when that when a 30 day in addition or 30 days was added to the year. We're going to Colossians 2 and verse 17. Because in this chapter, the Lord had Paul rebuking the philosophers, y'all. He started, if you look at verse 8, he said, Be well, let's see any man spoil you through philosophy and vain to see at the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world. So Paul's rebuking the philosophers. Go ahead. Which are a show of things to come. You got 16, verse 16. Oh. Yeah, read verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, uh -huh. or in drink, uh -huh. or in respect of in, of in holy day, uh -huh. or of the new moon. No, see, they say new moon. Because there's only one new moon involved with the Lord's, that sets the Lord's feast. That's a bit. That's what we saw in the law. In the law, y'all. So, which I, which he said, let no man judge you in meat, in meat or in drink, or in respect of in holy day, or of the new, he knows he said the new moon. What new moon do you think he's talking about, y'all? Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Or the what? Or on the Saturday. Day. Because the Sabbath days are set from the Abed new moon. We're talking about the holy days, y'all. Go ahead. 
which are in shadow of things to come. Yes, sir. But the body is of Christ. But the body is of Christ. Because that's who are observing these things, the body of Christ. We're talking about the true body of Christ. The ones that believe in Jesus, keep his commandments, and his feast. This represents the body of Christ because we deal with his holy days. So with that being said, let's go to Ezekiel 4 and 34. Because what we experience now has appeared before and it's been done before. We go to Ezekiel 4 and 34. Ezekiel 4 and 34. Ezekiel 4 and Sorry, Ezekiel 4 and look at the area. Ezekiel 4 and 3. Ezekiel 4th chapter and verse 3. Actually, I want to get right to the point. Right to the point. Skip down to verse yeah, Ezekiel 4 and verse 5. For I have laid upon them the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days, 390 days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. Now, why did the Lord use 390 days, y'all? Why? We're going to find out because now this causes us to think. Is the Lord using, because if you use 12 times 30, that's 300 and what? 60. Plus one more month gives us what? 90. 390, what we just read. That's why I want to go now into the count, y'all. And let's do ourselves a favor here. Because, see, to understand that the month Abib is 30 days, Israel had to know how long a month was. And let's go to Leviticus 27 chapter and look at that. Because they had to know how long a month was so they can pass judgment on the following. We're going to see what it is. Together. Because funds were being picked out for certain services. And here in Leviticus 27, verse 5, watch this, y'all. There was a certain estimation that was being done. In this case, they were looking at males and females. But watch this, y'all. Leviticus 27, and verse 4. Sorry, verse 5. I got it written down. Yeah, verse. Yeah, we'll start at verse 5. Read. And if it be from five years old, even unto twenty years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male twenty shekels, and for the female ten shekels. Now we're looking at money, y'all. That's what that's what our money used to be called when we was in our land. We had shekels. Okay, y'all? Now we got dollars and pesos and francs. Anyway. But no, keep going, keep going. And if it be from a month old, seven even. No, sorry. If it be from a month old, even unto five years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male five shekels of silver, and for the female thy estimation shall be three she shekels of silver. So they had to know, so say, and if it be from a what? A month old. So they had to know how long a month was, right? Well, let's go quickly and look at this thing. Let's go look at another aspect, Numbers 3 and 14. And when the, on the precept to know how long a month was, or how, much, how long a month is, and the numbers the third chapter, verse 14. Again, they had to know what a month was. Numbers 3 and verse 14. Hey, babe, I already showed you it's 30 days, but I wanted to show you how the book said what a month is. Numbers 20, sorry, Numbers 3 and verse 14. Again, they are assessing a month or determining a month. Go ahead. How long a month? And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number number the children of Levi, after the house of their fathers, by their families, even every male from a month old and upward shall thou number. So they had to know how long a month old was. So let's go look at the number of what a month is, y'all. Let's go to Deuteronomy 21 and 13. Now, in this case here, we're looking at a captive. The law concerning the captive. And 
the Lord had his written, and if you look at the lunar calendar, those that go by the lunar calendar, if you count on the lunar calendar, or even when you look at the silver months, you see some days it's 28, some is 29, 30, 31, I don't know. But with the Gentiles, they all over the place, y'all. They just, anyway. But when you look at the lunar calendar, when the Lord said the number, you had your new moons. Remember, we saw that category, your new moons. That fluctuates. Some is 29, some is 30. It goes back and forth. But watch what the Lord had written here, y'all, concerning uh, a month. Deuteronomy 21 and 13. Because this is concerning the calf. Go ahead. And she shall put the remnant of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thine house, mm -hmm. and bewail her father and her mother a full month. Wait a minute, so she shall bewail her father and her mother for a what? A full month. So you may tell there's a month that are not full? Yeah, you see 28 days around. But a full month, and we're going to look at how long a full month is. Go ahead and finish that. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. Now let's go to another case, the same case, but watch his mourning. Because this woman had to mourn a, for how long? For a full month. So now let's go to Numbers, the 20th chapter, verse 29. And look at mourning again. This time we mourn it for a dead person. Numbers 20 and 29. She was mourning because she was in captivity. She had her father, they was, they were done. She had to mourn a full month. So let's look at this numbers 20 and 29. Let's see how long the mourning is, y'all. A full month. Let's see what the mourning is for a full month. Is. Go ahead, verse 29. Because this, oh, sorry, let me get it back. Because Aaron had died. Okay? So read. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron 30 days, even all the house of Israel. So we see when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron. How long? 30 days. That is a full month. That's a full month according to the Bible. Even all the house of Israel. So now, let's go and see it again. Deuteronomy 34 and 8. Because the principle of getting knowledge from this book say, let every matter be established by two or more witnesses. And to the law and to the testimony, we're going to see 30 days Crosses the law and the testimony. So 34 and verse 8. Deuteronomy 34th chapter and verse 8. This is the only chapter that Moses did write. How could he read it? He's dead. A lot of dead men don't write nothing. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 8. Look at the weeping from Moses. Read. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains. Of more thirty days, uh -huh. so the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. Oh, so we see a full month again when you mourning for a full month is defined again thirty days for the days of weeping and mourning. Okay, thirty days, y'all. It's a full month. So now let's do ourselves a favor and let's go to Revelation eleven chapter and verse one. Matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 8 and 20. I want to read something because we have people that may be new and never heard of this. So Isaiah 8 and 20. So now we understand, if you understand, why it was 390 days, if it's 12 times 30, that's 300 and what? 60 plus what? 30 gives what we read in the prophets. 300 and what? 90 days. So now, let's look at Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. Read. Isaiah 8 and 20. Read. 
to, to the law and to the testimony, and they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. So we gonna go to the testimony and see if 30 days stand up, y'all. Because it said to the law and to the testimony. If this be not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Now let's go to Matthews, the 13th chapter. And verse. Who we try to bring light to how we count. A full month. Matthew 13, chapter, and verse 52. Read. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man, <coughs> like unto a man that is in the householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So we got to speak to the new and to the old, y'all. No, she said everyone that's being instructed. That's why the book said to the law and to the testimony that they speak not according to this word. It's because there's no light in them because you've been instructed to the new or you give it instructions to the new and the old. You bring forth light. So now let's go to Revelations the uh, 11th chapter and see if this 30 day thing crosses over to the New Testament. And let's see if that meets up to the qualifications of what gives us 30 days a month. Revelation 11 and verse 1. Read. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. And the altar in them that worship the ring. Uh -huh. But the court which is which is without the temple leave out and measure not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Now look, if we think about thirty days, a like full month. Let me go in there. The term a like full month, which is thirty days. If we multiply thirty times forty-two months. Let's see what we get. Let's see if the Bible answers that for us. In the very next 30 times 42, is it 1,260, y'all? Let's see. Go ahead. Next verse. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. Oh, so the book, the math is right there for us. No need to break out a calculator, y'all. 30 times 42. Gives you 1,203 score days, which is 1,260 days. That's the math, y'all. That's the math. Let's go to the middle of the book. Let's go uh, to Matthew's 24th chapter. Matthew's 24 and 15. Actually, I want to go. Because that was the end time. So let's go to Matthew 24. And we're going to start at verse 3. And then we're going to skip that. Matthew 24 chapter and verse 3. Because we that believe the Bible know that the great tribulation period is for three and a half years, 1,260 days, 42 months. We, that's what that's what the book said. We go there all day long. So let's read what happened in the end time. Go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now notice the first thing that came out of Jesus' mouth after they asked this question. It's to take heed that no man deceive you. That's why we have question and answer after every lesson, y'all. If you think anybody thinking I'm deceiving them, call it to the teleconference call room. We just discuss the matter clearly, and we're going to read. Because this ministry believes the book is right. That's what's right, y'all. So if I've been found wrong, and I have been, and I have been checked, I ain't got no problem with it. I'd rather be corrected now. Rather than standing on the day of judgment getting corrected, you get corrected at that point. It's a wrap, boys. He corrected you to the lake. That's going to be your correction then. 
I'd rather be correct than not to righteousness with the book now, so we got it right. Nevertheless, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And boy, that is so the truth, y'all. But let's get down, because Jesus points out some things here. And one of the biggest signs that the Lord put out is mentioned in verse uh, 15. So we're going to read into verse 15 by starting at verse 11. Read at verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive me. Uh -huh. And because iniquity shall abound, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we show sure living in them days and times, y'all. Yes. Oh, boy. Woo. Okay, that, that script got deep impact. I'm going to put a, a deep meaning. And a lot of us see this clearly happening in these days. Nevertheless, go ahead. But he, mm -hmm. but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. See, that end, that's either when you drop or when the Lord comes back. Okay? Because I always say salvation comes in two parts. You can be saved from that fake Jesus and that fake Christianity and them Satanized pastors. Right now, you can get that today. You can get saved from them many false prophets today. Start right today. But guess what? You got to endure to the end to get that saved. So the it's two parts, y'all. Okay? Two parts. Get saved from the many false prophets now and the deceivers now so that you can endure to the end to be saved. As I said, saved is, is more than one part to that, y'all. It's a now and a later. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for our witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And notice, he said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. This. Why did Jesus have to make the statement of this? Because in days like this, and times, ain't nobody teaching this stuff. It's all about anything else but being saved from the many false prophets and the many deceivers. And what they do, they show up on. Hmm. Anyway, moving right along. Verse 15. When ye, shall, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by, the, by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who's so weird and let him understand. So let's go and do that and watch what comes up when the Lord points this out. Let's see if the 30 day, the 30 day count comes up, y'all. Let's go to Daniel's, the 12th chapter, and we're going to go right to verse 11. We're going right to verse 11. Daniel's 12 and verse 11. He said, when you so read it, let him understand. Let's get some understanding, y'all. Watch this. Read. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it, make it desolate is set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Okay, y'all, what's the difference between one thousand two hundred and ninety days and one thousand two hundred and sixty days? What? 30. Say it again. 30. Say it again. 30. 30 days, y'all. That's the book. To the law and to the testimony. New and old. 30 days crosses this book in both hands. That is the light of how we count a month, a full month, when we apply our thing, our, our, our priest, our verbs, because it's set from what? A, B. So now, let's do ourselves a favor. Let's go to uh, 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 the very beginning of this book, y'all. Let's go to Genesis 7 chapter. So we went from the end of the book, we, in the, we done went to the middle of the book. So if you know the end and the beginning, um, the end and the middle, let's see what the middle is going on. Oh, before we do that, sorry. Matthew 24 and 37. Then we're going to go to Let's read Matthew 24 and 37. Because we read about the coming of the Lord. We know that 30 days is the count per month. That's how we get 30 times 42, 1,260. And we just read Jesus showed you the difference of 30 days between 1,290, 1,260. And watch what the Lord said right here in Matthew 24. And we're going to go verse. Uh, 37. This is about the coming of Jesus. 
Matthew 24 and 37. Read. But as the days of no word, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So, but as the days of no word, so shall the coming of the day, uh, coming of the Son of Man be. So in the coming of the Son of Man, it was 30 days per month. That we clearly saw, because 1,290 subtract 1,260 gives you what? 30 what? 30. 30 days. So now, let's go and see what we're looking at. Well, Kiko, read the next verse. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Uh huh. And, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So now the same count that's being used in the coming of the Lord, we know it's 30 days from Let's go into Genesis and look at that. Genesis 7, chapter and verse 11. So we know it's 30 days in the coming of the Lord. We're looking at the 30 days per month count in the very months that we're looking at right here. Because if it ain't 30 days per month right here, then we call Jesus a liar. Okay? So let's look at what the Lord said. As it was in the days of his coming, so was it in the days of Noah. Genesis 7, and let's read verse uh, 11. So this is when the Lord getting ready to do damage before the flood hit. As Jesus spoke of, now let's look at that time period. Read. In the 600th year of Noah's life, mm -hmm. in the second month, the 17th day of the month, mm -hmm. the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows window, windows of heaven were open. So we had, we had two 30-day periods go by, and we were on the 17th day of the month. Let's get down to verse uh, 24. And the waters prevailed upon the earth, in 150 days. So we got 150 days. So if you take 30 into 150, how many months is that, y'all? That's five months. Because five times 30 is what? 150. So now let's go into the eighth chapter, y'all. And to get to our point, uh, let's go to verse. No, let's start at one. Genesis 8 and 1. And, and God remember Noah. And every living being and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters as waves. And the fountains also of the deep and the widows of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven were restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. Mm -hmm. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. So now, after 150 days, right? So we go five, I'm sorry, 30 times five months. Okay, that's 150. So he said, after 150 days, look at verse four. And the ark rested in the, in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, upon the mountain of Ararat. Ar 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 so now, remember, we started out with two months. Then you add five months, each one of these months of 30 days. Pow! We come up with what the book said and all rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. So we understand from the middle of the book, now we went from the end of the book, the middle of the book, and the beginning of the book to get light on how we count each month. And each month is set from when God said, this shall be the beginning of the year to you, what did he name the first month, y'all? Abel. So I hope you got some understanding concerning Abel, the month that says the Lord's feast, and each month being a 30-day per month count, and he divides his year into two six months. 180, 180 gives you 300 and what? 60. That's why the Feast of Tabernacles, not to mention the trumpet, starts out the end of the year. That's why the Feast of Tabernacles is in the end of the year. Because it's on the 15th day of the what? Seventh month. Okay? So I hope you got some understanding.